Hey everyone, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. Let's just get right into it today because we are joined by the one, the only Dax Holt. <laughs> I like that intro. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. I mean, listen, it's 8 a.m. Like, so Rachel, you could tell, which is how we really ultimately mm -hmm. connected, even though you've been on my radar forever. She was like, why are you doing this with Dax at 8 a.m.? I don't understand. <laughs> I'm like, I wish everybody wanted it. I'll do a 6 a.m. if you want. <laughs> I love the early, early mornings because I, I feel like I got a bunch of things I got to get done in the day. And so it's like, knock it out so then I can go out and, and, and do what I need to. But I do love the fact that we met through Rachel Yucatel. Like, what a, what a weird thing to say, right? I mean, right? Like, what is, I mean, I was out having drinks with her in New York and it just, you know, because she started her podcast. I know you were on, I was just on and she was like this and that and you should interview Dax, you should have him on. And I'm like, you've been on my list forever and it's just like, I know, you know, John Pascarella and your media company because I do a lot with Melissa Rivers. They actually, the other day we were speaking, they were like, you know, it would be great on your show they're like, you really need to do some collaboration with Dax. And I'm like, it's happening in like a day. So like all of a sudden you're circling in my world. But yes, we technically met through Rachel, you could tell. It's so funny. Yeah, same same here. I feel like I've known your podcast for a long time and been like, okay, we just need to make it happen and and never had. And so I'm, I'm glad that we are finally doing this. Were you always like into celebrity growing up? Oh, 100%. I, so I was one of those kids that like my mom had the People magazine sitting out on like, uh, the coffee table and I would flip through. And so I've just kind of my whole life known the details about celebrities lives and ju just kind of kept up on the news stories, not really realizing that I enjoyed it. But then when I was in, um, I think it was college, high school, I don't know, t towards the end of high school, maybe college, I got an internship at ESPN, one of their TV shows. And I realized I knew nothing about the sports world. And, you know, they're asking me for these players. And I'm like, I, I don't know any of this. What I know is celebs. And that's why I was like, all right, get out of sports, get back into the celeb world. And ever since, it's just, it's my niche, man. Like, who were your favorite celebrities growing up? Growing up? Ooh. Um, growing up. You know, I used to be, I used to be the biggest Christina Ricci fan when, because Adam's okay. family, like when I was growing up, that movie had become so big and I felt like she was everywhere. So I remember her being a spotlight of a lot of my, my childhood time. Um, but then I also grew up with Britney Spears. You know what I'm saying? She's like, what, two years older than me or a year older than me. And so going through high school and Britney being the biggest thing on the planet, like I was in love with Britney. Um, so I'd say those are like the, the the major ones growing up that I spent a lot of time like kind of watching their life uh, transform in front of my eyes. So it's no shock that you ended up at TMZ. No shock at all. Not, I mean, it was really the perfect fit. I, I, I literally graduated college and the next day started full time at TMZ because I had done an internship with Extra, the other TV show that's like sister, uh, sister shows with them. And then wound up there and it was like the perfect fit like oh i get to talk about celebs every single day oh my job is to look through the paparazzi photos and be a super voyeuristic uh, job yes like sign me up all the way around i loved it and i think that's just why it ended up really working out for me you're like i'll do this job for free a hundred percent like who doesn't want to look through the unfiltered unblurred unblack barred photos of every celeb out there it was the greatest gig did you have like a highlight of your time there? Like just one thing that stands out or like someone you interviewed or someone you interacted with? I mean, it was like 12 years at TMZ. So I, I wouldn't, I, I would say it wasn't one moment, but I, I mean, I just, I look back at so many fond memories of, of working there and the people I did meet, like getting to meet, you know, Kim Kardashian or Paris Hilton or Justin Bieber or, you know, you just you would wind up meeting a lot of people. And of course, not everyone would like you because you worked at TMZ. Don't get me wrong. But then there was a lot of people that would like I, I remember David Spade coming up to me at a restaurant and just introducing himself and saying how much he enjoyed the TV show. And I think because TMZ put uh, comedians, they gave them a platform that the other shows weren't doing for them, you know, and so there was a lot of people that appreciated TMZ and a lot of people that didn't. I mean, I had Janice Dickinson literally run the opposite way from me when she saw me walk into a restaurant. 
I had Janice Dickinson on this podcast twice. I just saw her at a party recently, not to name drop, but she's she, she's an interesting one. Yeah, she is. <laughs> she is an interesting. So she like ran away from you when she saw you in a oh, restaurant. Oh yeah, she she wanted nothing. And I'm like, I'm here having breakfast. Like we were at, you know what? Do you know what the griddle is? Yeah. So the griddle is like this famous pancake spot. It was like three doors down from where the TMZ office was at the time. And I just went over to grab some breakfast. She was in there and she took one look at me and she was like, nope, not staying and peaced out. I'm like, I don't have a camera. I'm not even a camera person. I just am an employee at this company that clearly you are not a fan of. Do you ever, has anyone, you know, through that or like Hollywood Raw, your podcast, I mean, you know, but you're actually nice on your podcast. Like, has has anyone just come up to you? You know, like you hear the stories, like, you know, like Perez Hilton, I've spoken to, you know, like that typical, you know, Jennifer Aniston in the parking lot. Like, did you ever have like someone just come up to you and be like, listen, I have a few words to say to you, like, and they're standing right in front of you? So not really. And I think that was because I changed the way that I reported a long, long time ago. So right when the TV show first started, I want to say the first thing I said on air was that Chris Angel was a douchebag. That was literally my first words on national television. And then I started to realize like, man, I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be labeled as the mean guy on TV. Like there were enough of those people in that room to, you know, spew out hatred and so I kind of always just changed my my pitches to be, how can I make this either funny or witty or nice, but not mean? And so I didn't have a lot of bad interactions with celebrities. You know what I'm saying? I, they would look at TMZ maybe as uh, they didn't like the brand or whatever, um, but they wouldn't necessarily look at me as a, a bad person, I guess. I would agree with that. Do you have a favorite interview you've ever done between that and Hollywood Raw? Ooh, between that, I would say I've had, so I started up the podcast because here's the one thing, David, like I didn't talk to a lot of celebrities at TMZ. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we had people in, but it was more talking about celebrities all the time. So when I had left there, I was like, I want to start something that I actually talk to the celebrity. So that's where kind of like Hollywood raw kind of evolved into something. Um, But one of my favorite interviews, I think was just Brooke Hogan. We had her on our podcast. She was fucking awesome like awesome she was so cool and i think it was someone someone that i had reported so much on her over the last you know decade or whatever and her family was in the news and they had so many things happen to be able to get her perspective on it and she was so down to earth and we found out all these cool things about her that you know she her reality show ended and she went and she became a little like a cocktail waitress at a JW Marriott. And I just thought that was so unique because a lot of people, when they're so famous and so recognizable, they don't go choose a job where they're going to be around so many people, you know, and have to answer the questions. And like, why are you working? Why are you serving me drinks now after being on reality television? And I I loved her perspective. She was just so cool. So she was probably my favorite interview so far. Wow, and a recent one too. Yeah, it recent and I mean we've had a lot of people. We've you know Tara Reid was another one up there. Kelly Osbourne. I mean a lot of these people that I think I enjoy the interview so much 